quando la nostra vita chiaro ci rivela e non si vive se non si cerca la verità Beloved in Christ, I welcome you to my reflection for the solemnity of the epiphany of the Lord. And the theme of my reflection is Epiphany, God enters into human history. The Feast of Epiphany is a feast of God's manifestation to man. Epiphany is from the Greek word epiphania, which means appearance or manifestation. In this case, the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior of the whole world. For through the visit of the three wise men, the universal salvific will of the Father is made manifest. Thus, Epiphany is a feast that celebrates the universality of salvation. More than that, Epiphany celebrates mainly the self-revelation or manifestation of God to the Gentiles, to non-Jews. And this is portrayed by the visit of the three wise men in the Gospel with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and men. Indeed, at the heart of the Epiphany event, at the threshold of the quest of the three wise men are three earths to search, to see, and to submit. These three verbs were programmatic in the search and encounter of the three wise men with the newborn king. They embarked on a journey because they wanted to see him, and for this desire to see him, they went in search of and for him. And when they sought and saw him, they submitted themselves to him in adoration. Mm -hmm. These three action words should equally characterize as well our own journey of faith. Beloved in Christ, the readings of today converge on the theme of the Christian universalism, thus the universality of God's salvation. In Matthew's Gospel, this universalism is presented by the visit of the Magi, who came from the East to adore the newborn king. In their gesture, we see the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, at his light all peoples will work. As seen in our first reading. On his part, St. Paul in the second reading was unable to receive the mystery of God. As he says, the Gentiles now have the same inheritance and form the same body and enjoy the same promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, as in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. Dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel in no small way revolves around the adoration of the newborn king by the three wise men. In Matthew's account, they observed and followed the star, which reveals that they had knowledge of astrology. Again, we are told that they came from the east. This implies that they came from Mesopotamia, which according to the Hellenist world is known to be home for astrologists. However, it is worthy to know that this gospel is not just about the three wise men, rather the one who has been born, the king of the Jews. Jesus was born at the fullness of time, or better, when the time was fulfilled, as in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. At that point in time, people were longing for the Messiah. Despite this longing, which for some was real and for others was apparent, in today's gospel, we see different categories of people and their reactions about his birth and presence. First is Herod. Herod the king was blocked by seeing Jesus because of his suspicion. The birth of Jesus meant insecurity for him. Little wonder he killed whoever he suspected to be a rival. Thus, his reaction towards Jesus was that of hostility. Second, we see the chief priests and the scribes. This group reacted differently. They were indifferent to the presence of Jesus. They didn't care. They were busy with their fears in the temple and with legal dealings. Probably they were afraid of King Herod. Little wonder they handed him the information and remained unmoved. They did not even dare to lead the three wise men. They remained unmoved in Jerusalem, but Jesus was found in the poverty of Bethlehem. Third is the three wise men. They were learned people, but their knowledge did not get over their heads. As such, their reaction was that of openness and acceptance. The three wise men represent the whole human race, people of every language and color, who set out to adore Jesus. 
And in this event, the prophecy that will adore and bring him gifts is fulfilled. As in the book of Psalms, chapter 72, verse 10. To find Jesus, we need to search for him with faith. To find him, we need to pass through Jerusalem as the three wise men did. Here, Jerusalem stands to symbolize the church. In that sense, the journey of the three wise men is a symbol of an itinerary of faith each of us is called to embark on. And in that journey, when they found Jesus, they adored him and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and men. Be that as it may, the Magi or the three wise men did not present mere gifts to the king. Rather, the three gifts they offered to him were replet and beaming with significance. Gold symbolizes a gift for kings, denoting his kingship. It was indeed a sign of their sincere and total love. Frankincense, the ancient people used it for religious worship, and it points to gods and divinity. It is therefore a symbol of the divinity of Christ, and the Magi used it to adore him. The Meh, in the ancient world, Meh was used to prepare dead bodies. On the cross, Jesus was offered wine mingled with Meh, as in Mark chapter 15, verse 23. And his body was anointed with men for his burial, as in John chapter 19, verse 39. For instance, we remember the women that came with men to the tomb of Jesus to anoint his body in the Gospel of Mark chapter 16, verse 1. This depicts the vulnerability of the human nature that Jesus assumed. This gift is therefore symbolic of Jesus' humanity. The prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled in the episode of the arrival of the Magi to Jerusalem, and in turn, we could equally say that the gospel is the fulfillment of his prophecy that at his light, all peoples will walk. And the Magi did follow the star. Therefore, with the fulfillment of this prophecy, God's revelation brings to their realization various novelties of great importance. First, that the center of the nations is not a city, is not Jerusalem, but a person, Jesus, the Messiah and Lord, born in Bethlehem. Second, the journey towards this center will not be only for the Jews, but for all, Jews and pagans alike. Third, the people will not convert to Jerusalem to render court to Yahweh in the temple, but in Bethlehem to adore a baby in the arms of his mother Mary. The passage of the gospel gives us a wonderful indication on how to locate Christ, the Savior, and that is as the three wise men have demonstrated through openness and disposition of heart, with a sincere desire of having the knowledge of the truth without prejudice. Similarly, beloved in Christ, there are as well obstacles that may hinder us from locating and encountering Christ. First is fear, fear of encountering one who overhauls over our life. For if you encounter Christ, you have to change your orientation and criterion of judgment. Second is civility to the powers that be as it happened to the religious leaders of that time who were slaves to the political power of Herod. The powers that be today could be ideologies, dominant current of thoughts, contrary to the gospel. Third is ambition for power, as it happened with Herod, an attachment to the things of this world. We need to liberate ourselves from the things of this world and personal prestige, allow ourselves to be guided and led by the light that comes from above as the three wise men allow themselves to be led by the star. In all, the red thread that runs through the readings of today is the revelation of God in Christ and the universality of God's salvation. The epiphany inaugurates a new direction, a new route. They went home through a new road because they were enlightened by God, and that new way is Jesus. Jesus, in the event of the epiphany, gives us a new way and a new direction. He offers himself as the Savior of all, without exception. What have we to offer him in return? The three wise men presented gold, frankincense, and men. The journey of the three wise men might be taken as an expression of man's religious quest, and as such, man as carpas dei, to say it with St. Augustine. The question that should stem from our hearts is whether we still have this religious zeal and quest today. Do we still have the quest for God? What is our own reaction to this newborn king? Is it that of hostility, indifference, or concern and love? That of the three wise men was love and adoration. 
Even me today, I have come to adore him. What of you? Let us join the three wise men in this marvelous and admirable adoration of the newborn king. Come, let us adore the leading star. Come, let us adore the light that enlightens all men and makes them one. Let us pray, asking God to enable us to seek him with a sincere heart as the three wise men did. And may the Lord bless his word in our heart through Christ our Lord.